حق الله والله يا الله والله حق الله يا الله حق الله والله يا الله والله السلام عليكم مير جون توري هير اند اي ام جست هير تو سي ثانك يو تو ذا اسلامك فاونديشن اوف تورونتو وانس اجين فور الاوينغ مي تو شير ذس مسج وذ يو ديورينغ ذا هولي مانث اوف رمضان Technology can be a powerful tool, and I'm happy to see that thanks to Radio 770 AM and the Islamic Foundation of Toronto, you are able to stay connected with your community and with your faith, and that, in turn, I'm able to stay connected with you. You know, during tough times, faith gives us the courage and the power to push through, to persevere. COVID-19 has been challenging for all of us. It's changed how we go about our daily lives in our great city, each and every one of us. But we must remember that at the end of all of this, we will come out stronger. And in order to do that, we need to stick together right now. We need to help each other out and be there for one another. This is something I know the congregation at the Islamic Foundation of Toronto knows so well. I've seen it with my own eyes. Whether it's the weekly hot soup program that has been running for, I think, about 15 years now, serving over 500 meals a week to food banks across our city, or the Ramadan food baskets that you put together along with grocery store gift cards to help those in need. This is the spirit of giving, and this is the same spirit of giving that is so strong in Toronto's Muslim community and at the Islamic Foundation of Toronto. I know many of you are looking ahead to what comes next, and we at the city are working hard to plan for a safe and responsible reopening and restart of our great city. The biggest thing you can do right now is to continue to stay home whenever you can, and to follow public health advice, to distance from one another. You know, Ramadan is normally a time, and I've experienced it myself with all the iftar dinners, for family and friends and people of common faith to come together for the dinners and for the evening prayers. But this year, I continue to encourage families to please stay home and celebrate within your own household. With the help of technology, I hope that families can still find ways to connect with each other during this important holiday as we're connecting right now. And I want to thank you in the end, for doing that, for staying together, for all that you do for the community, and to thank the Islamic Foundation of Toronto for providing this opportunity for me to connect with this community. It is something that I look forward to, and I also look forward to the day when we can do so again in person. We are all in this together, and we will get through it together. Ramadan Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Ramadan Mubarak to a lot of you. Um, Jazakallah khair for tuning in. My name is Sister Asiya Khan, um, and I would like to extend my heartfelt appreciation for the entire IFT team for inviting me to speak today. Um, IFT and its management team offer a number of religious community and outreach services. They're a pillar of our community. I would like to acknowledge President um, Brother Akbar Warsi and Brother Javed Ali Khan and the Board of director, Directors for doing amazing work as volunteers to serve the community through Islamic Foundation of Toronto. Um, you'll notice um, some numbers below me um, and I also want to share these numbers for those who are listening on the radio. Um, please do consider donating to IFT. Um, I'll be reminding you of these numbers throughout but the number is 647-468 3040. You can also call 416-488-1339 or visit us online at islamicfoundation.ca. Um, so my name is Asya, like I noted, um, and I hold a Bachelor's of Science in Psychology as well as a Master's in Social Work. Um, a lot of my work has been um, around community de development, research, a lot of my research um, has been in, num in a number of different institutions. Um, I've worked with the Hospital of Sick Children. Um, I've been at the University of Toronto in a number of different research positions. Um, and a lot of my research has centered around mental health, um, specifically with um, youth and marginalized communities, um, as well as looking at the impacts of Islamophobia in Canada. So um, a lot of what I'm going to be talking about today draws on a lot of that research, um, as well as some of my own personal um, kind of experiences as a Muslim woman in Canada. Um, and so, you know, when we're thinking about Islamophobia, a lot of us have a lot of different ideas about it. In many ways, some of us are almost even consider it a buzzword, right? We hear it a lot. 
Um, and some of us would assume that, you know, Islamophobia started relatively new, right? It's a relatively new phenomena. Um, you know, it's a post 9-11 phenomena, right? That's sometimes things that we hear. Um, but rather, when we think about Islamophobia, it's entrenched within our, within our history in Canada, as well as, you know, our own history. Um, when you think about, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, a lot of the struggles that he went through would be considered, um, you know, um, Islamophobic, right? He experienced a lot of um, verbal insults, he experienced physical insults, and so the history of Islamophobia, even within our religious tradition, is alive, right? And so it's important for us to be mindful um, and take, um, take heed from the example of of the best of creation, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and think about the ways in which he um, combated Islamophobia, right? At times, um, you know, we, we noticed he, he was a mercy to mankind, right? So he, he was patient, but he also knew, you know, when to be assertive um, and when to intervene. Um, and of course, you know, he upheld the most highest um, standards of justice. Um, and so when we're looking at Islamophobia, it's important to recognize that it's a part of our own history um, as Muslims as well. Um, and, you know, when we're looking at um, our current climate living in Canada, alhamdulillah, we're all, you know, super blessed to be um, in the country that we are in right now um, with, with the number of resources that we have um, and, and kind of, you know, the facilities that are offered to us here. Um, but it's also important for us to think about how can we ensure that, you know, um, future generations to come, as well as, you know, uh, Muslims right now in Canada um, are able to openly practice the religious identity without that fear of feeling ostracized or feeling like they're going to be a target of Islamophobia. Um, so, you know, even when you think about, you know, just even media representations, right? Um, how many of you can even name three or four um, Muslims on TV, um, mainstream television, that that would positively affirm um, Islam or the Muslim identity, right? And when we think about this, many of us um, would struggle a little bit to even think about three to four names, right? And so the media landscape right now, um, unfortunately, doesn't always portray our communities um, in, in positive lights, right? And so there's a number of different systems that are involved in perpetuating Islamophobia. Um, and this does trickle down and have an impact on youth. Um, so like I noted, a lot of my research was around, you know, the impacts of, um, you know, experiencing forms of discrimination on mental health, um, specifically Islamophobia, right? And we noticed that Islamophobia does have mental health impacts. It does impact your well-being. Um, when, you know, a, a study was done that looked at, um, you know, if young children, um, you know, their connection to their faith and their religious identity, we found some really interesting things. Um, I actually wanted to share a study by Noor Kids in partnership with San Francisco University. They conducted a study and essentially what they did was they asked a number of um, young children, right, between the ages of five and nine years old, um, and they asked them, they said, you know, what is it like, you know, to be Muslim? How do you feel about your Muslim identity, right? And many of us would assume, you know, these are really little kids, but, you know, they must have very positive views. And alhamdulillah, many of them did have positive views, but many of them were also very confused, right? So one in three didn't want to tell others that they were Muslim. And one in six um, would sometimes pretend not to be Muslim. Right. And this is not because they don't want to be Muslim. They're not proud of their identity, but rather it's because of, you know, societal views around the Muslim identity and Islam. Right. So because of the prevalence of Islamophobia, a lot of these children felt like they had to hide a part of that identity. Um, and so many of you might say, you know, this is San Francisco. This is America. Right. Um, but I, I would challenge you to think, you know, there's been preliminary research done here as well that would also parallel these results. And so Islamophobia impacts all of us in many ways, right? It could be you trying to get a day off for Eid sometimes at work, right? It could be a little bit of a challenge maybe. Um, you trying to, you know, pray in the middle of your classes sometimes, right? Um, and so these are, you know, a number of different examples. Alhamdulillah at IFT, there's a faith-based education. And so, you know, students are, are able to experience a space where their identities are being affirmed and actually celebrated. Um, and so, like I noted, please consider supporting IFT um, and, 
and it is in in a way it's it's a way for us to foster a generation of students of children that are proud of who they are um, because at its core what islamophobia really does is it creates a sense of disconnectedness so you know as a social worker as a practicing social worker working in mental health um, you know, sometimes I get clients who come to me with, you know, anxiety. Um, they're presenting with signs of depression, for example. Um, and, you know, when we kind of have a conversation and we get to the bottom of it, a lot of times what we're noticing is at the core of it, folks are feeling disconnected, right? They're feeling isolated. They're feeling like they don't belong. Um, and so it's important for us to think about how we as a community can come together to continue to fight against Islamophobia and to ensure that um, our, our children, right, our youth um, are, are supported. Um, obviously, you know, as we're having this conversation right now, we are living in really uncertain times. Many of us, you know, being um, at home during, you know, COVID, many of us are still having, um, depending on, you know, what profession you're in. Um, if you're in healthcare, some of you, you know, are having to, to engage um, and still be out there. But all overall, right, it's a very uncertain time for a lot of us. Um, many people are, are worried, right, in terms of their financial situation. Um, they're worried about loved ones, right, who may be at elevated risk um, for contracting COVID-19. Um, and so for many of us, um, these are very unprecedented times. These are times that, you know, we had never have anticipated, right? Many of us seeing the images of um, the Haram Sharif in Mecca being, um, you know, closed off um, due to social distancing requirements um, and safety measures um, kind of came as a shock to many of us. Um, and then, you know, looking at how major institutions and mosques um, also had to, you know, close their doors due to these social distancing requirements um, and safety regulations, which are extremely important. Um, so it's important for us to think about the times that we're living in right now. And so for many of us, we might feel very overwhelmed. Uh, many of us might um, feel, you know, worried, might have a lot of questions, you know, when is this going to end? Um, how am I going to cope with this? How long can I handle this for? How long, um, you know, can family members of mine handle this? Um, I'm feeling very isolated right now. Do I have enough hand sanitizer? Um, and so these are all the questions and all the worries that people have, and, and they're valid, right? But it's important for us as believers to also be reminded of who is in control, right? And think about um, who is it that has the controls, who is the best of planners, um, and who is the most just and compassionate, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And so when we're thinking about how do we cope during these times, it's important for us to be reminded um, of who really is in control, take a deep breath and be reminded that he is the best of planners um, and he knows, he knows what you're going through. Um, and, and, you know, whatever difficulty um, that you are facing, every difficulty does come with ease. Um, and so as we're thinking about COVID-19, we're thinking about, you know, many of us um, are, you know, fasting for Ramadan, right? Many of us, some of us have health issues, so we're not able to, but many of us are fasting during this blessed month. Um, and many of us are kind of noticing, um, feeling disconnected, right? And so folks who, folks who felt disconnected prior to this, prior to COVID, um, as well as folks who, you know, have have bared a lot of the brunt of Islamophobia or other forms of discrimination, a lot of these folks are going to feel increasingly isolated during COVID, right? And so it's important for us to think about how can we remain connected um, during these um, what feel like very unpredictable times, right? And so um, I'm going to talk about three ways to feel connected during COVID, right? So the top three ways for you to feel connected during um, COVID. Um, so obviously, you know, there's a, there's so much opportunity um, in this time. So I, I and I don't mean to be insensitive. Many folks, um, I do acknowledge um, the struggle and the challenge that this time presents. Um, but I also, you know, encourage you to think about um, that silver lining, right? How is it that we can make the best out of this situation? What are the blessings in this situation right now? Um, and so I encourage you to think about how can you meaningfully connect. Um, and I'm going to talk about three different ways. I'm going to talk about connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to talk about connecting to family. Um, and I'm also going to be talking about connecting to community. Um, and so when we're looking at connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, 
you know, from a psychological perspective, from a mental health perspective, um, research suggests, right, that um, religious practice is actually a protective factor um, when folks are feeling, um, you know, isolated or confused. Um, and, you know, actually during this time, folks surveyed Canadians and they noted that, you know, folks who are already engaging in religious practice during this time, um, they've noted that they're going to they're probably engaging in even more practice now um, because a lot of us turn to religion when it comes to uncertainty and predictability because, you know, a lot of us can't answer um, the questions that many of us have around, you know, what's going on. But we do know as believers that Allah is the best of planners. And so Allah does know what's happening. He knows what's happening in each and every one of your homes. He knows the condition of your heart and your soul. And so he is the one um, who, who is in charge. Um, and so being mindful of that is really, really important to just ground us, right? And so when we're looking at even religious practices such as prayer, um, reciting the Quran, um, you know, thinking about contemplating the signs of Allah. So if you, even if you're going for a walk, for example, right? Look around and think about, you know, um, all the beautiful verses in the Quran that talk about how nature submits to, to Allah, how beautiful, um, you know, the flowers are in bloom. We're in spring right now. Um, and to really kind of think about, um, you know, be really mindful um, of Allah SWT during these times. Um, there's a lot of buzz around mindfulness, mindfulness meditation, practices. And in many ways, as Muslims, we're already engaging in mindfulness um, a number of times during the day, right? Our prayer is an opportunity for us to ground ourselves again, to reconnect to what really matters, um, to reform, right? Or to reorient ourselves back to Allah. And so, um, you know, in psychological discourse and mental health research, there's that, you know, a really strong correlation between, um, you know, mental health, uh, men, men, like well-being and mindfulness. And so, um, but just by meaningfully engaging in religious practice, you are engaging in mindfulness. Um, obviously, you know, go in with the right intention um, and, and kind of be really, really mindful of your surroundings, um, of your prayer. Um, and that will help ground you, um, inshallah, if you are feeling a little bit anxious and disconnected. Um, and also practice gratitude, right? And so um, a lot of folks um, in the mental health field, if you're a counselor, if you're a therapist, um, a lot of folks um, recommend clients to keep almost like a gratitude journal, right? To do daily recordings of what they're thankful for. Um, and so when we're thinking about a relation to, relationship to Allah, there's so much for us to be grateful for, right? Um, there's so, we're so grateful to be able to live um, uh, through this this month of Ramadan, right? Many of us are kind of, you know, so blessed to be able to be around family, right? So many of us are very blessed to um, be able to, you know, open our fast knowing that we're going to have food on the table. Um, and so thinking about all of our blessings um, is also a very, um, it's a beautiful way to cultivate a strong relationship to Allah. And it's also a way for us to feel connected. Because um, a lot of us are going to have a lot of alone time, right? Um, and so being able to kind of just be mindful of, of our emotions, our feelings, and kind of channeling this extra time that we have right now um, to form a stronger relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, is, is, is going to be really, really helpful. Um, and also recognizing that, you know, um, it's really a test of sincerity as well, right? No one, you know, you might not be attending the mosque. You might not be in, in public. Um, and so really, you know, what you're doing now is, you know, developing habits, right? Good habits that will take you through, inshallah, the, the rest of the year and the year to come, right? This is your opportunity. You, you know, research suggests it takes about 30 days to develop a habit. And so you have these 30 days of Ramadan, obviously, we're almost, you know, almost through Ramadan. Um, we're coming in, you know, we're in the last 10 nights. But it's, it's a good reminder for us to start cultivating good habits, to use our time wisely. Um, you know, make a dua list, right? Be reminded that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always near. Um, and set goals for yourself, right? Um, it's really, really important for us to have goals. Um, not, you know, goals that are up in the air, that don't have proper, um, you know, um, ideas around timelines. Think about goals that you can actually achieve, right? Be, um, be realistic with your goals. Um, and as you achieve them, you'll feel better and better, right? So you can start off by really small goals um, and then kind of, you know, make them bigger as you succeed. Um, and so, of course, everyone starts off differently, right? We all have different practices. We all have different um, ways of connecting to Allah. 
Um, and so, you know, you, your, your connection or your way of practicing or expressing that connection might be different than a friend of yours um, or, you know, a family member. And so just be mindful that everyone might choose to express that connection in different ways. Um, but, but that by no means doesn't mean that they're not connected, right? Um, and so, of course, the first one is to be connected to Allah. Um, the, the second thing I wanted to kind of bring up is, you know, connectedness to family. Um, right now, many of us are um, experiencing um, a lot of stress and tension, right? A lot of us are, um, in, and, and a lot of us are in very close quarters, right? Where a lot of us are engaging in social distancing um, with others, but we are in close quarters when it comes to our homes, right? We're very close to our family members right now. Um, and so while this can be a beautiful thing, and it is a beautiful thing for many, um, it can also be a point where folks are feeling um, uh, frustrated. It can be, um, it can be a time where you know we're noticing more conflicts, right? Just because you have that increased interaction, right? And people are already feeling very anxious. Um, and so remember to create boundaries for yourself as a family. Be mindful of what the workload is, right? If you have someone in your family who's taking on so much, um, you know they're going to get burned out, right? And so many people are you know engaging in um, you know online learning, right? And think about you know I'm supporting children through that. That too can be quite a stressful experience if you talk to a lot of other parents. Um, and so be mindful of how you can split duties at home, right? Give people their alone time. People need alone time, right? Make sure you're creating those healthy boundaries. Um, and so, you know, think about even family in other in other parts of the world, right? If you have family in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, um, all you know, other parts of the world, think about how they might be coping as well. Finally, I wanted to remind you that you know, connect with community, right? No doubt, the Islamic Foundation of Toronto is a pillar of our community. Um, it it allows us to connect. Um, not just on a spiritual level, but also on a, on a societal level with those around us. Many folks like myself would look forward to Tharavi prayers um, in the mosque, iftars with family and friends. So reflect on, on that feeling, right? Reflect on that feeling. Obviously, some of us feel like we're not able to engage in that right now, but imagine what next Ramadan is going to look like, right? And so our, our support is really, really important right now. IFT is asking for your help, your support to get through these times right now. Um, it's difficult for many of us, but many of us can do something. And so, I, you know, there's a number on the screen. I'm also going to share the number with you again, and I encourage you to donate. Um, again, the number is 647 Four six eight zero uh, three zero four zero. So that's six four seven four six eight three zero four zero. Um, and the other number is four one six nine eight eight one three three nine. You can donate by calling that, those numbers, or you can donate online. So consider donating to IslamicFoundation.ca. Uh, the example of those who spend their wealth in the cause of God is that of a grain that sprouts into seven ears, which bearing 100, each bearing 100 grains. And God multiplies the reward even more to whoever he wills, for God is all bountiful, all knowing. This is a verse from chapter 2, um, verse four, 261. So think about how your reward can be multiplied during these last 10 nights. Um, ensure that you are taking this opportunity to be blessed. Um, I encourage you to support IFT. It's a foundation. It's a community building institution, and they need your help right now. So this is your chance to engage in this reward and this blessing. Um, Salam alaikum. I hope you have a wonderful Ramadan. Take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us here with the diverse speakers on 770 AM, as well as Awaz TV. Uh, this is a program brought to you by the Islamic Foundation of Toronto. Uh, Alhamdulillah, as all of you know that uh, the Islamic Foundation of Toronto is located in Scarborough and uh, it's one of the first uh, masajid, uh, one of the first masjids in uh, the Toronto, Ontario region. And uh, with many services uh, that uh, many of you continue to benefit from and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, shower his mercy upon all of you for always visiting the Islamic Foundation and uh, being there for uh, the masjid and uh, enrolling your children as well as attending the various programs. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all in this month of Ramadan. As uh, all of you also know that Islamic Foundation of Toronto, like many masajid, have been affected uh, with the current challenges 
uh, of COVID-19 and uh, the fundraising appeals that we generally do at the masjid during the month of Ramadan uh, have not been taking place because of the lack of congregation. And uh, the bills need to be paid, uh, the expenses related to the services, as well as uh, the, uh, the expenses uh, for the operation of the building, uh, they need to be covered. And uh, we are appealing to all of you to kindly donate generously by giving in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is through your contrib contributions that we can continue uh, the great work here at the Islamic Foundation of Toronto. And uh, uh, this is a golden opportunity. Once the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, he was asked, uh, what is the best time to give charity? What is the best charity? What is the best time to give charity? And the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, responded by saying uh, that the charity given in Ramadan is the best charity. Uh, so Alhamdulillah, we are in the blessed month of Ramadan. I know uh, we are all in this difficult pandemic uh, and uh, we have been affected, all of us, in some way or the other. But the, the month of Ramadan has come as a blessing. And when we give in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name uh, and we make the intentions to uh, alleviate, Allah alleviate these uh, challenges and these difficulties, then for sure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond and He will give us the best of returns uh, both in this world as well as in the hereafter. And uh, we are appealing, the Islamic Foundation is appealing to you uh, that you contribute. There are several ways to contribute. Alhamdulillah, uh, during the uh, month of Ramadan, the foundation, the Islamic Foundation, the masjid located at 441 Nugget Avenue, has uh, started the drive-through office, or we call it the mobile office. Uh, so uh, for any questions that uh, some of you may have, you can drive in and uh, you can uh, ask your questions. Uh, also, uh, those of you who would like to give donations on hand in person, uh, you could do so by coming into the drive through uh, office. Uh, the masjid remains closed, uh, so the masjid will not be open for prayers or services or um, uh, the regular uh, uh, jama'at, etc. But uh, uh, you can come in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the parking area where the mobile office has been uh, set up and uh, you can give your contributions, you can ask your questions, and uh, you can support the Islamic Foundation of Toronto. So this mobile office is open uh, from 3 to 7 uh, every single day. From 3 to 7, so drive by at the Islamic Foundation of Toronto and give uh, your contributions, ask your questions, and uh, show us your support. Uh, as well, um, those of you who want to donate online, visit the Islamic Foundation website, islamicfoundation.ca, and contribute whatever you could. Uh, just click the donate button, and uh, very quickly you will be uh, taken to the page and you could securely donate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. So that's through our website, islamicfoundation.ca. And a third method for contributing and donating uh, in this blessed month of Ramadan while we are uh, going through these difficulties and to help the masjid is by calling the numbers that are showing up on your screen. I'm also saying the numbers. Uh, the, these numbers are 647-468-3040. Once again, 647 647- 4683040 and uh, personnel will be uh, there for you online on on the phone and they would uh, take your contributions uh, and uh, guide you accordingly another number to call we have two uh, assigned individuals uh, who will be taking care of your calls uh, for contributions 416-988-1339 once again the other number is 416 416- 9881339 and give your contributions on behalf of the Islamic Foundation I'd like to continue to appeal to all of you jazakallah khairan for watching the program uh, for uh, also logging on to our live YouTube channel with uh, several live programs uh, if you are not aware about them visit islamicfoundation.ca or our YouTube channel at YouTube uh, slash uh, Islamic Foundation CA 
and uh, we have daily uh, programs. Uh, I'm conducting some of those daily programs. One is the uh, Islam Essentials, where we're talking about the basics of Islam and how we can apply them in our modern day, as well as uh, we have the Juz by Juz Tafsir Summary, the Quranic Summaries, every single night at 10.30 premiered on YouTube. Uh, similarly, we have youth programs uh, every Wednesday. We have webinars. Uh, we have uh, the Suratul Kahf recitation live with uh, the various Hufal and, and reciters that have graduated right here from the Islamic Foundation of Toronto. They are reciting live uh, Fridays at 1 p.m. And then we have our usual virtual sermon or uh, Friday reminders uh, with me on uh, Fridays on Juma at 1.30 p.m. And a number of host of, uh, host of programs uh, on health and diet, etc. Uh, with uh, uh, different speakers uh, here on uh, 770 as well as uh, Iawas TV. So have a look at all these programs and this is only possible with your contributions. The masjid needs you. As I have been saying, when we take care of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah takes care of us. Uh, whatever little we can contribute in large amounts, in little amounts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shakur. Uh, he is very grateful. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept whatever we can. Uh, and the minimum that we are asking from every one of you who is earning, who has a job, who has an income of some sort, uh, please contribute and pledge uh, to be amongst one of those who will give one dollar a day. One dollar a day for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A brother asked me a question that uh, if I give $365 in one check or a uh, one-time payment online, uh, then will I get the reward of one dollar a day? Uh, so I explained to the brother that it's based on your intention. When you gave this $365, for the masjid, uh, to, uh, for the year, uh, with the intention of one dollar a day, Allah will accept that intention. <inaudible> our actions are judged on our intentions. So what is our intention? We should make the intention that, Oh Allah, I would like to serve you. Oh Allah, I would like to serve your, your deen, your masjid, and I would like to contribute. Uh, so given large and small amounts in this blessed month of Ramadan, and as we know, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that charity, it removes the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the challenges that we are facing in today's time uh, with this pandemic and otherwise, uh, one easy way to remove that is to contribute generously in all good causes. Give to any masjid, give to any orphanage, give to any great cause that, is, uh, uh, that, that you feel is doing great work. And don't forget the Islamic Foundation of Toronto. Make the niyyah uh, that Allah remove your problems, your poverty, your challenges, your family issues, your economic issues. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you tremendously. So once again, three methods of donating. And we appreciate you logging on and, and watching. Islamicfoundation.ca. The numbers are 647-468-3040. As well as the other number 416-988-1339. Please contribute generously. Give in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will reward you. He will multiply your wealth. He will give you barakah in your families. And He will give you the best of peace and contentment in this life and the hereafter. Jazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Haqq Allah Allah ya Allah Allah. Haqq Allah ya Allah. Haqq Allah Allah ya Allah.